Book Eight, Chapter Two of Ben Hur by Lou Wallace. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chapter Two. An hour or thereabouts after the scene upon the roof, Balthazar and Simonides, the latter attended by Esther, met in the great chamber of the palace and while they were talking ben-hur and iris came in together the young jew advancing in front of his companion walked first to balthazar and saluted him and received his reply then he turned to simonides but paused at sight of esther it is not often we have hearts roomy enough for more than one of the absorbing passions at the same time in its blaze the others may continue to live but only as lesser lights so with Ben-Hur, much study of possibilities, indulgence of hopes and dreams, influences born of the condition of his country, influences more direct, that of Eris, for example, had made him in the broadest worldly sense ambitious, and as he had given the passion place, allowing it to become a rule, and finally an imperious governor, the resolves and impulses of former days faded imperceptibly out of being, and at last almost out of recollection it is at best so easy to forget our youth in his case it was but natural that his own sufferings and the mystery darkening the fate of his family should move him less and less as in hope at least he approached nearer and nearer the goals which occupied all his visions only let us not judge him too harshly he paused in surprise at seeing esther a woman now and so beautiful and as he stood looking at her a still voice reminded him of broken vows and duties undone almost his old self returned for an instant he was startled but recovering he went to esther and said peace to thee sweet esther peace and now simonides he looked to the merchant as he spoke the blessing of the lord be thine if only because thou hast been a good father to the fatherless esther heard him with downcast face simonides answered i repeat the welcome of the good balthazar son of her welcome to thy father's house and sit and tell us of thy travels and of thy work and of the wonderful nazarene who he is and what if thou art not at ease here who shall be sit i pray there between us that we may all hear esther stepped out quickly and brought a covered stool and set it for him thanks he said to her gratefully when seated after some other conversation he addressed himself to the men i have come to tell you of the nazarene the two became instantly attentive for many days now i have followed him with such watchfulness as one may give another upon whom he is waiting so anxiously i have seen him under all circumstances said to be trials and tests of men and while i am certain he is a man as i am not less certain am i that he is something more what more asked simonides i will tell you Someone coming into the room interrupted him. He turned and arose with extended hands. Amra! Dear old Amra! He cried. She came forward, and they, seeing the joy in her face, thought not once how wrinkled and tawny it was. She knelt at his feet, clasped his knees, and kissed his hands over and over. And when he could, he put the lank gray hair from her cheeks and kissed them, saying, good amra have you nothing nothing of them not a word not one little sign then she broke into sobbing which made him answer plainer even than the spoken word god's will has been done he next said solemnly in a tone to make each listener know he had no hope more of finding his people in his eyes there were tears which he would not have them see because he was a man when he could again he took seat and said come sit by me amra here no then at my feet for i have much to say to these good friends of a wonderful man come into the world but she went off and stooping with her back to the wall joined her hands before her knees content they all thought with seeing him then ben hur bowing to the old men began again i fear to answer the question asked me about the nazarene without first telling you some of the things i have seen him do and to that i am the more inclined my friends because to-morrow he will come to the city and go up into the temple which he calls his father's house where it is further said he will proclaim himself so whether you are right o balthazar or you simonides we in israel shall know to-morrow balthazar rubbed his hands tremulously together and asked 
where shall i go to see him the pressure of the crowd will be very great better i think that you all go upon the roof above the cloisters say upon the porch of solomon can you be with us no said ben hur my friends will require me perhaps in the procession procession exclaimed simonides does he travel in state ben hur saw the argument in mind he brings twelve men with him fishermen tillers of the soil one a publican all of the humbler class and he and they make their journeys on foot careless of wind cold rain or sun seeing them stop by the wayside at nightfall to break bread or lie down to sleep i have been reminded of a party of shepherds going back to their flocks from market not of nobles and kings only when he lifts the corners of his handkerchief to look at someone or shake the dust from his head i am made known he is their teacher as well as their companion their superior not less than their friend you are shrewd men then her resumed after a pause you know what creatures of certain master motives we are and that it has become little less than a law of nature to spend life in eager pursuit of certain objects now appealing to that law as something by which we may know ourselves what would you say of a man who could be rich by making gold of the stones under his feet yet is poor of choice the greeks would call him a philosopher said iris nay daughter said balthazar the philosophers never had the power to do such thing how know you this man has ben hur answered quickly i saw him turn water into wine very strange uh, very strange said simonides but it is not so strange to me as that he should prefer to live poor when he could be rich is he so poor he owns nothing and envies nobody his owning he pities the rich but passing that what would you say to see a man multiply seven loaves and two fishes all his store and into enough to feed five thousand people and have full baskets over it that i saw the nazarene do uh, you saw it exclaimed simonides i and ate of the bread and fish more marvellous still ben hur continued what would you say of a man in whom there is such healing virtue that the sick have but to touch the hem of his garment to be cured or cry to him afar that too i witnessed not once but many times as we came out of jericho two blind men by the wayside called to the nazarene and he touched their eyes and they saw so they brought a palsied man to him and he said merely go into thy house and the man went away well what say you to these things the merchant had no answer think you now as i have heard others argue that what i have told you are tricks of jugglery let me answer by recalling greater things which i have seen him do look first to that curse of god comfortless as you all know except by death leprosy at these words amra dropped her hands to the floor and in her eagerness to hear him half arose what would you say said ben hur with increased earnestness what would you say to have seen that i now tell you a leper came to the nazarene while i was with him down in galilee and he says lord if thou wilt thou canst make me clean he heard the cry and touched the outcast with his hand saying be thou clean and forthwith the man was himself again healthful as any of us who beheld the cure and we were a multitude here amra arose and with her gaunt fingers held the wiry locks from her eyes the brain of the poor creature had long since gone to heart and she was troubled to follow the speech then again said ben hur without stop ten lepers came to him one day in a body and falling at his feet called out i saw and heard it all called out master master have mercy upon us he told them go show yourselves to the priest as the law requires and before you are come there ye shall be healed and were they yes on the road going their infirmity left them so that there was nothing to remind us of it except their polluted clothes such thing was never heard before never in all israel said simonides in undertone and then while he was speaking amra turned away and walked noiselessly to the door and went out and none of the company saw her go the thought stirred by such things down under my eyes i leave you to imagine said ben-hur continuing 
but my doubts my misgivings my amazement were not yet at the fall the people of galilee are as you know impetuous and rash after years of waiting their swords burn their hands nothing would do them but action he is slow to declare himself let us force him they cried to me and i too became impatient if he is to be king why not now the legions are ready so as he was once teaching by the seaside we would have crowned him whether or not but he disappeared and when his next seen on a ship departing from the shore good simonides the desires that make other men mad riches power even kingships offered out of great love by a great people move this one not at all what say you the merchant's chin was low upon his breast raising his head he replied resolutely the lord liveth and so do the words of his prophets time is in the green yet let to-morrow answer be it so said balthazar smiling and ben-hur said be it so then he went on but i have not yet done from these things not too great to be above suspicion by such as did not see them in performance as i did let me carry you now to others infinitely greater acknowledged since the world began to be past the power of man tell me has any one to your knowledge ever reached out and taken from death what death has made his own who ever gave again the breath of a life lost who but god said balthazar reverently ben hur bowed oh wise egyptian i may not refuse the name you lend me what would you or you simonides what would you either or both have said had you seen as i did a man with few words and no ceremony without effort more than a mother's when she speaks to wake her child asleep undo the work of death it was down at nain we were about going into the gate when a company came out bearing a dead man the nazarene stopped to let the train pass there was a woman among them crying i saw his face soften with pity he spoke to her and then went and touched the bahir and said to him who lay upon it dressed for burial young man i say unto thee arise and instantly the dead sat up and talked god only is so great said balthazar to simonides mark you ben-hur proceeded i do but tell you things of which i was a witness together with a cloud of other men on the way hither i saw another act still more mighty in bethany there was a man named lazarus who died and was buried and after he had lain four days in a tomb shut by a great stone the nazarene was shown to the place upon rolling the stone away we beheld the man lying inside bound and rotting there were many people standing by and we all heard what the nazarene said for he spoke in a loud voice lazarus come forth i cannot tell you my feelings when in answer as it were the man arose and came out to us with all his sermons about him loose him said the nazarene next loose him and let him go and when the napkin was taken from the face of the resurrected lo my friends the blood ran anew through the wasted body and he was exactly as he had been in life before the sickness that took him he lives yet and is hourly seen and spoken to you you may go see him to-morrow and now as nothing more is needed for the purpose i ask you that which i came to ask it being but a repetition of what you asked me o simonides what more than a man is this nazarene the question was put solemnly and long after midnight the company sat and debated it simonides being yet unwilling to give up his understanding of the sayings of the prophets and ben hur contending that the elder disputants were both right that the nazarene was the redeemer as claimed by balthazar and also the destined king the merchant would have to-morrow we will see peace to you all so saying ben hur took his leave intending to return to bethany End of chapter 2